Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you're watching this in the world, I hope you guys are doing okay. So today we're going to be talking about the insidious nature in which a company that goes by the name of Sweet Baby Inc. have been operating on the Western gaming landscape and how they've affected a lot of major releases such as God of War, Spider-Man 2 and Mortal Kombat 1. And the reason that I wanted to talk about this is because of Mortal Kombat 1, but there is actually a wider issue. Now, Mortal Kombat 1 has a whole bunch of problems. It has a WB problem. I'm sure you guys have all heard the news about live services and what they plan on doing with their games. We're going to get into that another time, but we're going to focus on Sweet Baby Inc. and who they are and explaining to you why they are such a problem for Mortal Kombat and Western games. So a bit of background information on Sweet Baby Inc. They were founded in 2018. It is a narrative development and consultation studio which is based in Montreal and they work around the globe. So they work with loads of different developers and loads of different studios. And basically what it says on their website is that their mission is to tell better, more empathetic stories while diversifying and enriching the video games industry. We aim to make games more engaging, more fun, more meaningful and more inclusive for everyone. I hate to be a Debbie Downer, but the words that they've used in that opening paragraph of their website on the About Us section is very, very damning, especially in the current climate. Whenever someone says to me that we are looking to diversify and we are looking to be more inclusive, those are usually the people that have the complete opposite intentions. They are usually the people that want to silence you and tell you, you are going to eat this shit and you are going to like it. And if you stand against it, you are a bigot and you are every single phobe on the planet. But we're gonna go through their website to give you guys a bit of a rundown. Now this is gonna be a fairly long video because I wanna break down exactly what the issue is here and how it circles back to Mortal Kombat, but we're also gonna cover some other games because as I said, it is the Western gaming landscape that's being affected by these imbeciles. So if you go on their website and you scroll down, they've got a services section. We believe you need diverse voices to solve diverse problems. Sweet Baby Inc. provides narrative consultation at any stage of development boasting a talented team with a vetted industry experience to best bring your story to life. And then if you scroll a little further down on the website, you can see what games they've worked on. On the main page, they've got Alan Wake 2, they've got Spider-Man 2, they've got God of War Ragnarok. Then if you go to Show Me More, you can see there the very much hated Suicide Squad is available to see there. And there's a bunch of other games that they've got in their grubby paws on. So we're going to run through some of the things that are on their website, but you can also see there their clients. WB is a client of them, Santa Monica, Xbox Game Studios, Electronic Arts, Ubisoft, 2K, Polytron, Rocksteady. So they have really, really sunk their teeth into the Western gaming sphere. And it's not good for anyone. These are the sort of people that will rot these industries from the inside out under the guise that they're doing it to make it more inclusive for you, under the guise that they're doing it to be more inclusive to the masses. When really, we all know what this is about. This is about money, this is about power, and this is about control. They don't care about you if you're black. They don't care about you if you're gay. They don't care about you being seen if you're trans. They don't care about any of those things. Because if you notice, a lot of these companies that say they care, when shit hits the fan and nobody's buying their products anymore, they do 180s. Go and look at the Bud Light situation. They dropped Dylan Mulvaney quicker than I dropped Mortal Kombat 1. So we're going to read through some of the parts of their website so you can get more of an understanding of who they are. So they've got on their writing. From cinematics to box and everything in between, we tackle every type of writing for any type of game. We bring excitement, emotion and character to the forefront and aren't afraid of breaking something down to build it back up. We do cinematics, dialogue, UI, UX, writing, box and copywriting. Then if you scroll down again, you get to where it says narrative and it says whatever your story needs, we're here to help. We tackle narrative and character in any form, keeping emotional resonance and authenticity at the heart of our work. We do story pitches, world building, character creation, narrative design, story feedback and tweaks and more. So essentially what happens here to break it down for you guys, although I'm sure you can read between the lines here, you'll present them with a story and these imbeciles will look at it and go, that's problematic. That's problematic. Remove that because it's racist. Remove that because it's homophobic. Remove that and add this in to represent these people because we need to make sure these people feel seen or whatever nonsense they're going to come out with. I have a whole bunch of issues with that paragraph in itself, but we're going to dive into that a little bit more later. I just want to give you guys a brief overview of what we're starting out with. And then the most insidious part of this whole page, and insidious is going to be the word of the day, is representation. We believe that representation is key to connecting players and audiences, and we offer a few ways to help your team and project gain the 
the perspective needed to make it happen. We're part of an inclusive and knowledgeable community of diverse consultants able to cover a wide range of cultural and sensitivity topics. Our approach leads with the creation of joy in marginalized players and seeks to be additive rather than strictly corrective. We do cultural consultation, sensitivity and inclusivity reading, risk and opportunities assessment and more. Now again, that entire paragraph to me is a problem. I don't need somebody to give me cultural consultation if I'm designing a game. Okay, piss on that. Make your own damn game. What these people do is they get their fingers on established franchises like Spider-Man 2, for example. And I played through Spider-Man 2 not knowing that these people were involved with it. But it was very, very clear to see that there was forced diversity and inclusion in that game. And the thing is, is that there's nothing wrong with having a gay character or a gay lead or a black man or a woman. Those things have existed in gaming for a very long time. Case in point, I can give you one off the top of my head. The first season of The Walking Dead by Telltales, the main character in that game was Lee, a black man man and the other main character and it was Clementine she looked like a mixed race girl very young girl and the first season of the Walking Dead game is one of the best narrative pieces that I've played in a long time so much so that the ending of that game actually brought me to tears I was genuinely upset at the ending of that game that was expert writing now that comes from a time in gaming where pieces of shit like Sweet Baby Ink didn't really exist I mean I'm sure they were around and we're going to get into that a little bit because you're going to hear a name in a minute you're probably familiar with but it certainly wasn't at the level it was at now so why do companies like sweet baby inc exist and what is their goal well there's this thing called the esg esg stands for environmental social and governance and so what happens is companies are required to meet a certain criteria and when they meet these criteria, they get funding and obviously you get funding you get more money you get more liberties you have more in your pocket and so these companies reach out to companies like Sweet Baby Inc. to, I guess, get advice. Or so that is what they claim. I think it's a little bit more deeper than that. And we're going to get into that a little bit. But essentially, they're looking to tick some boxes. The same way you might hear about diversity hires. When you go to a job and they say, oh, we need to hire a certain amount of black people, a certain amount of women. Rather than hiring people on their merits and on their character and on the value of their work, They'll hire you because of what may or may not be between your legs and what skin color you are, which in my mind is pathetic. And I'm telling you that as somebody that's half black, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen me by now, even though I don't put my camera on a lot of the time. I'm not a white male before anyone starts that nonsense in the comment section, although I am straight. So maybe I lose points because of that. But these sort of diversity hires and these criteria they need to meet essentially just end up killing companies. Nobody needs this nonsense. I don't need a bunch of people that look different to me to do a job. I need to do the job correctly. I really couldn't care less what they look like or how many limbs they have. If you can do the job correctly, that's fine by me. It's not diverse to have a room of one woman, one black guy, one trans individual, one disabled person, because guess what? If all of those people think exactly the same, there's not much diversity going on there. Diversity of thought is much, much more important than how you look. That's superficial. The problem here is that, and what people don't understand, is that if you put a black man in a room and you put a white man in the room, these sort of people that claim to be inclusive, if they find out that they maybe lean a certain way politically, they'll ostracize them. They don't care that they look different. They don't care if they've got different skin color. They'll just tell them to leave the room. What they care about is appearing like they're being inclusive, but again, I don't want to digress too much. So we've covered the ESG funding and there's a criteria they need to meet. Now, BlackRock is the biggest investor. It's the world's largest asset handler. And BlackRock is very much involved with these sort of things. Another company that is involved that you might have heard of is a company called the Vanguard Group. They're another major player in the game. And when it comes to ESG investments. So here you can see in these screenshots, you've got WB here, you've got Take Two Studios. There are a number of studios and their top investors are BlackRock and are Vanguard. And so they meet the criteria of what BlackRock and Vanguard put out whether that means bastardizing the game or not, whatever that criteria may be, and right now, unfortunately, it's meeting diversity quotas, they will meet it for monetary gain. Now that you have a bit of a understanding of what these things are, or at least you can go look up more information on them and who's involved in here, I'm sure you guys have heard of the BlackRock name before. I want to talk a little bit about the origins of Sweet Baby Inc. Now, not Sweet Baby Inc. specifically, but where the ideas came from. Now, a lot of you that have been on my channel for a very long time know that way back when I was covering a certain individual called Anita Sarkeesian and the entire Gamergate situation. As you can see here, I made loads of videos about it. I covered a lot of the Last of Us 2 controversy.
Cersei and how she got her grubby paws on The Last of Us 2. I have a video on my channel dedicated directly to Anita Sarkeesian and her history and how she basically brought about the first coming of destruction for the Western gaming front. Now Anita Sarkeesian is not a real gamer. Anita Sarkeesian is not invested in the video game world. Anita Sarkeesian is a leech. What she does is she latches onto things and she pushes her air quotes progressive ideas and she tries to force it on games. Now one of the games that it was forced on was The Last of Us 2 and it was very evident in the very opening moments of that game when we watched Joel be brutally murdered in one of the most uncharacteristic ways. To make way for a character who they said was female but when I looked at Abby I thought it was Brock Lesnar and so Anita Sarkeesian's influence has been felt throughout the gaming industry and there's been ripples of it for a long time. Feminist Frequency is a failed company, it's a failed YouTube channel. You go to the YouTube channel now, it is still there but they don't really get any more views, nobody really watches the channel. For a channel that has over 200,000 views I believe, they're getting nothing and so they sort of died out but their ideas lived on and that is kind of what you see with Sweet Baby Inc now. Now there is an individual that I want to talk about in Sweet Baby Inc. And we're going to move over to that very briefly. There's a person at Sweet Baby Inc. called Lego Butts. Uh, that's their Twitter name. I'm not showing you these screenshots to send harassment to Lego Butts because if I'm being completely honest with you, I don't even think you should engage with somebody with such a low IQ. You shouldn't lower yourself to talking to an individual that is so devoid of common sense and so absolutely ridiculous and devoid of common sense. I don't think you should lower yourself to speak to them. So I'm not sending any harassment their way. However, they did decide to tweet a bunch of questionable things. I would go as far as to say racist, which I find hilarious considering you're working for Sweet Baby Inc., a company that pretends to be inclusive and pretends to be diverse. It's always these people that have the most extreme and outlandish ideas about race and gender. But you know, they'll wag the finger at us and they'll tell us that our video games are bad and we need to cover up that woman over there and you can't say these things about these people. It's always those types of people. So I'm gonna read some tweets from this individual that were made a couple of years ago, which I do find very interesting. Now these tweets have been deleted, but thanks to the power of the internet, they have been recovered. So take a look at exhibit A. You can see there Lego about saying, you guys are F word. Now they're not saying F you, you know what F word they're using. It's a gay slur. I'm not going to repeat it, but you guys know what they're saying there. N word is a term just like white girl. Now I don't know if Lego Butts is black or not. Be interesting if they weren't. It's also not a term like white girl. I don't know where they got that from. This is also Lego Butts on December 18th, 2019, making a very questionable tweet saying, I just had a thought about trying this again with a photo of a young white person about to be ripped open, but I'm betting folks would immediately flag it as traumatic and I'm guessing the image will get taken down before responses accumulated. Now why you would have to point out that it's a young white person and why you're thinking of of a young white person being torn to shreds is honestly bizarre to me and it's even more bizarre that you would tweet something out like that. You can see here on January 6th 2014 had a nightmare that I was a white male gamer so clearly this individual is racist I'm assuming they're not white or I'm assuming if they are white then they're female but clearly there's an issue here with white men which is the popular thing these days you know they, they love to dunk on white men and they seem to think that people like myself just because I am not white would take sides with idiots like this. Well, I'm here to tell you that every single black person with a brain cell would never side with anything like this. This is racist. Lego Butts is a racist. I'm saying that in 4K. And I'm willing to bet, although I haven't seen tweets from everybody else at Sweet Baby Inc., I'm willing to bet a lot of them have questionable ideas. I mean, the entire premise of their company is questionable, so I'm really not surprised. And you've got another one here from Lego Butts saying, pay me to shoot down your white male lead game ideas. So again, classic example of somebody that is projecting, somebody that would work in a company that says that it's inclusive and diverse but is actually just a sad racist themselves. Now another name that you guys are probably familiar with in the gaming space is Zoe Quinn. Zoe Quinn is a very controversial figure in the gaming space and I'm going to go over a little bit of information regarding them but I do want to point out that there was a time that Lego Butts and Zoe Quinn both doxed a charity group that advocated for opportunities for women in gaming. I'll repeat that again because these are the people that claim to be diverse and inclusive. Zoe Quinn and Lego Butts doxed a charity group that advocates 
for opportunities for women in gaming and they did that simply because they didn't like the ideas that the charity group had and so they seek to destroy it and as you can see here on the screen they're laughing about it saying oops we DDoS something on accident and then I like how a conversation between me and Lego Butts resulted in accidentally killing an exploitative startups website these people are deranged they're sick in their head and they're hypocrites now to give you guys a bit of backstory on Zoe Quinn Zoe Quinn is a radical feminist and I stress the word radical who made false accusations about a game developer which eventually led that game developer to ending his own life I'm going to repeat that again because this is the diverse and inclusive person they made statements and accusations false accusations that led a game developer to take his own life and websites dogpiled this man as you can see there on the screen before doing any research to find out if the accusations were true websites dogpiled this individual and he ended up taking his own life very inclusive right now before we move on from lego but because this is a spiraling story lego but has been on twitter tweeting because obviously a lot of people are shining light on sweet baby ink right now they're letting everybody know they're fanning the flames that this company has their grubby paws in multiple games and we're going to get to the games that they're, they're very upset about now, now the tweet starts off by saying I get to see a lot of tweets somehow blaming diversity as the reason for layoffs genuinely as if the economy was doing really great and capitalism simply worked before Miles Morales was Spider-Man they also don't recognize Miles as Spider-Man the weirdest part is when I see these takes from developers or people who have dev bios at least I don't know it seems wild that a dev would see thousands of layoffs and blame not the industry giants but instead a 15 person narrative company founded by a black woman I find it funny that they're pointing out that it's a black woman but lego bites i hate to break it to you but people vote of their wallets and it's really good that this information is out there now because anytime i find out that your company is involved even on my small platform i will encourage people to not support it i don't care if you're involved in spider-man 3 and they put all my favorite villains in it i'm not one of those people that is going to come on here and make videos about something when i have the knowledge that i dislike these things and then go buy it and i encourage everybody to stand on principles so that we can snuff out and get rid of companies like sweet baby inc we don't want sweet baby ink in anything nothing there's no need for sweet baby ink to touch anything they're a poison they are a cancer and they will destroy the industry from the inside out under the guise that they're doing it to include you to make you feel hurt let me tell you something sweet baby ink well we don't need you you ain't wanted i'm here to tell you right now we don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you <laughs> we don't care. These people think a company of narrative designers that freelance on projects that somehow single handedly cause the employment collapse in games instead of, you know, the insane notion of infinite growth or capitalist greed, it's easier to blame diversity than that somehow. Now, I want to point out that these people were directly involved with the latest Suicide Squad game. And the latest Suicide Squad game has absolutely bombed and it has cost the company, cost Warner Brothers, a lot of money. If you go and play the Suicide Squad game, it's very clear to see that there is a lot of forced diversity in it i don't need to go in the ins and outs of it but if you have played it you can see very clearly like spider-man 2 that there are just pockets of forced diversity into the game that are unneeded i mean in spider-man 2 who the hell wanted to play as Mary Jane? Please comment in the comment section below who wanted to play as Mary Jane. Every time I had to play with her, I literally paused the game and went and did something for a little bit to muster up the courage to sit through the absolutely painful experience of playing as her. Now, there's nothing wrong with playing as a female character in a Spider-Man game. If they added Silk to the roster, I'd be like, yeah, I'll play as Silk. Why not? It makes sense. But why would somebody want to play with Mary Jane? Plain old Mary Jane. She can't do shit. Everything she did in that game was so far-fetched and stupid. And I know it's a superhero game, but within the context of the game it was just dumb and nobody wanted it and it was a down point of the game i still think it's way more likely that they know that it's not the case and are just fine with looking stupid so as long as it justifies them being loudly anti-woke whatever that means we all know what it means the other part of this is doesn't matter if you tell them the truth they think DEI, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion, just steps in and changes whole games that creators are forced by some unseen hand, the government, BlackRock, guess, as well as just people of color in general to make games more inclusive. Fighting misinformation would be great, but social media and YouTube is not equipped to hold people accountable to doing real research in good faith, just getting hits and proving their point in the absence of confirmation. It's wild out there. Nothing has changed, nothing. This is all gaslighting, by the way, and I'm gonna prove why in a little bit. 
sorry, no one thing has changed. The number of people who understand that spreading misinformation just lets them be racist in public with no consequence has increased dramatically. This is Lego Bus, by the way. I mean, Twitter is basically the town square of the modern age and they're talking about being racist in public. I, I do find that quite hilarious. Probably requires some fighting from those with authority, probably. For example, Steam doesn't have guidelines for creators, as far as I can tell, that would prevent someone from starting a creation group that focuses on, say, Sweet Baby Inc. and warns people to not buy games they're associated with, which could just list any games at all. What they're referring to there is a Steam page that goes by the name Sweet Baby Inc. Detected. And at the point of this recording, Sweet Baby Inc. Detected has 214,767 followers. Now, when I originally saw Sweet Baby Inc. Detected, they had about 20,000. So it's good to know that gamers have jumped on the bandwagon. When you guys go to view this video, it's probably going to have gone up by a couple thousand by then. But essentially what this is, is that somebody has created a group and they list all the games on there that Sweet Baby Inc. is involved in, which is something that we should be allowed to know. We should be allowed to know who is making the games if we don't want to spend our money on them. That is all right. This is not a harassment group. This is not a group that is asking people to go and bother these people on Twitter. This is a group that is allowing the gamers, the people that buy these products to vote with their wallet. And I'm very grateful for the individual that made this because I can guarantee you now, if I see Sweet Baby Inc.'s name on any game, I am not touching it. It could be Tekken 9 and you can hold me to that. You can hold me to that. If I see their name attached to something and I haven't already bought it, because unfortunately I've already got Spider-Man, I've already got Mortal Kombat, I've already got God of War. If I have the knowledge beforehand, I am not purchasing that game. And gamers should have the right and the knowledge to know that. What is the issue exactly? If you're doing this for diversity, equity and inclusion, what is the problem of us knowing? Because surely, surely we're on your side, right? Because you're including us. What do you people not understand we don't want you anywhere near these products you are a cancer on these products you destroy everything you touch suicide squad was a resounding failure and that is likely due to the involvement of imbeciles like you who seem to think that words hurt people's feelings to the extent that they're going to sit in their beds and cry maybe because they weren't represented or maybe because someone used a slur like get over yourselves we don't need you here now if you can't tell this is going to turn into a gamergate 2.0 situation but if it has to be that it has to be that now I just want to say kudos to the Sweet Baby Inc. Detected page on Steam. Guys, if you are on Steam, go to Google, type in Sweet Baby Inc. Detected. It will be the first link. Go there, follow the page, support the page. Get them as many followers as possible because, like I said, companies like Sweet Baby Inc. need to be drowned out and they need to go bankrupt. I mean that. I do not want companies like Sweet Baby Inc. to be in business. I don't care if it costs them their jobs. I don't care if that sounds harsh. These are the people that will wag their fingers in your face and say that you're a bad person because you use certain words or you don't have these sort of people in your games and then they will destroy pop culture i mean they've already done it with marvel and then they won't allow any pushback any pushback will be seen as harassment or doxing to these people they're all stupid now, i want to point out another individual that works for sweet baby inc goes by the name of chris kindred who has protected their tweets and i gotta just say quick side note how bitch made you have to be to protect your tweets. Like seriously, do you not look in the mirror and see a bitch looking back at you? It is, I think it's absolutely ridiculous that you think you can come in and mess with people's mediums of entertainment and then not be willing to accept criticism. But Chris took it upon themselves, because people did manage to get on their Twitter, to basically find out that they were trying to make out that the guy that made the Steam account was harassing Sweet Baby Inc. They're trying to say that it's a harassment group. And that couldn't be further from the truth. If I went onto Steam now to make a group to expose a company that is involved in games that I might spend my money on, that is not harassment. That is awareness. You people are as stupid as you look. How could you say that's harassment? And then they're asking people in their community to go and report the group. Now, I don't actually think they can get that group taken down because I don't think they're breaking any guidelines. But as you can see there, fragile little Chris wants to go and report the creator. I believe the creator's name is Cabrutus. Cabrutus, something like Cabrutus Rambo. Cabrutus Rambo, you're doing the Lord's work. Keep doing what you're doing. And again, let me just stress that as posted on Reddit on the 6th of March, there were zero people playing the Suicide Squad game. If you needed any reason to change things up, there is your proof. It's not like Suicide Squad is not a household name. It's not like it's had multiple movies, successful movies as well, whether you like them or not. They, they generated a decent amount of money. Zero people 
zero people are playing the game. Now, I don't know if it's the case right now, but it was when that screenshot was taken. And that for a brand new game is absolutely shambolic. Guys, you need to understand that these ideas and these grubby leeches have been in the game industry for quite some time now. I mean, here is a tweet from Jonathan McIntosh where it says, as I suspected, Cyberpunk 2077 looks like it uses all the worst and most toxic elements of the genre's past with very little subversion. Nihilistic vision of the future, gritty dude protagonist, lots of glorified violence, sexual exploitation as backdrop, etc. And then you've also got the queen of leeches, Anita Sarkeesian. I'm always available for Consulting because it sure sounds like you might need it before the whole of the internet drags you for what sounds like some potentially sexist representations, which we all know you've struggled with in the past. Anita, let me explain something to you. The internet hates you and it hates people like you, male or female. People with your ideas, you are the ones that will be dragged. Anita Sarkeesian doesn't need harassment set in her way. No one needs to dox and I would never advocate for it. She is stupid enough to ruin her own career. Every time she opens her mouth, and admittedly it's not that much these days, although she does pop her ugly head up every now and then, you don't need to go and engage with this individual because she's stupid. Let her destroy herself. What we need to focus on is again voting with our wallets, not allowing these parasites to get their hands on our games. There was a time actually I remember when I was covering The Witcher 3 and there were people like her complaining saying there's too many white people in it. And I remember reading it thinking, yeah, it's made by a Polish studio who are producing a game that is medieval inspired. It's like when I saw people saying, oh, there's not enough black characters in the original Game of Thrones series. I was like, yeah, it's Middle Earth, bitch. What? Well, well, <laughs> they're not in Africa, okay? Do you think I felt offended because there was no one that looked like me in Game of Thrones? Like, get your head out of your asses. You know what? It's so condescending to be, you know, I'm a person of color, right? As they say, POC, their fa one of their favorite buzzwords. It's very, very condescending to have this woman and women like her trying to tell me that I need to be represented in games. There needs to be people that look like me. When I was growing up, I never needed a character to look like me to feel represented. I never saw a character and thought, oh, they don't look like me. I can't really be attached to them. What I did is I paid attention to the merits of the character, their characteristics, their personalities, what carried them. And that's when I got attached to characters. That's when I got attached to Peter Parker, to Charles Xavier, to Magneto, to Doctor Doom, to these characters who had very vibrant and diverse personalities, right? They all ranged heavily and they were all very well written. I don't need Magneto to be a black man. I don't need there to be a black Spider-Man. Now, I don't have that much of an issue with Miles Morales, although I do think he is just black Peter Parker. There's not much about him that really differs from Peter. And if I had to choose between which Spider-Man I want to be, it would be Peter Parker. Not because he's white, but because his character is more interesting. It's more fleshed out. It's more original. There's more going on there. Miles Morales at times, unfortunately, does feel like a carbon copy. He does feel like insert black character here. Now, like I said, I don't have much of a problem with Miles, but I don't really pay attention to Mars very much either. When someone says Spider-Man to me, I'm thinking of Peter Parker. Now, there are going to be some games that these pieces of shit get their hands on that will do well. Case in point, God of War and Spider-Man. But again, those games have such weight. You know, the Spider-Man IP has such weight to it that you would have to do something catastrophic to really destroy the reputation of Spider-Man. But, you know, leave it up to these people. They will find a way, I'm sure. Now, I want to show you this clip from GDC. And I want you to pay attention to what this woman is saying. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's gonna happen if they don't give you what you want. Terrify them with the possibility of what will happen if you don't get what you want. Does that not sound like bullying tactics to you? Does that sound like it's coming from a very inclusive individual? This is the kind of person, this woman is the kind of person that would turn around to me and say that she's doing it for the good of gaming and to make people feel heard and included. And let me tell you something, this person is just a money hungry leech, okay? A money hungry leech with nothing but insidious intentions. They look to self serve. They don't care about you. If you are a black person watching this video, if you are a gay person watching this video, if you are a trans person watching this video, they don't care about you. They care about Black Rock's money. They care about getting that funding. They care about getting their name on the credits. And they care about saying, yeah, I worked on Spider-Man. I'm this big important person. You ain't shit. And you know what's gonna happen? Gamers are gonna vote with their wallets. People are not gonna put up with this shit anymore because this Gamergate thing, this Gamergate 2.0, where it may have been a niche thing before, maybe niche is unfair because Gamergate was a pretty big thing. Gamergate 2 is going to explode. 
because of the way things have gone on the internet and because of the way people are on YouTube now, information travels very, very quickly. And Sweet Baby Inc., hear me now. Your company is going to go under. I mean, when I was looking into your website earlier, I did notice that it went down for some time. Now, I don't know why it went down. I don't know what you removed. Maybe you had some sort of sick piece of information on there. Who knows? But when I tried to get on there, I could not reach the site. It is back up and running now. But I really wouldn't be surprised if these guys disappeared overnight. And I would stress to developers to get them out of your game if you want your game to do well. And don't you think it's funny that this Gamergate 2.0 situation is blowing up and there's no real reporting from any of these big gaming websites. I mean, they're very, very quick to report any time someone says something that doesn't lean the way they lean, they brand you as a right-wing conservative, right? Even if you're not right-wing conservative, they'll brand you that way. They'll say, oh, the bros, they're being toxic again and all this bullshit. But this situation, which has blown up all over YouTube, is getting no coverage at all by these big studios. Why is that? Is it because they're all in it together? Is it because they all share the same train of thought? I've got to tell you, gaming journalists are some of the biggest idiots that I've ever met in my life. And I've met some in real life. And I've got to tell you, they're so stupid, it's unreal. They cannot read the room. I want to show you this little screenshot here. I'm going to read it to you because I, I did think it was very interesting. We have to look at story and narrative as one of the things that we can innovate on. Like when you bring someone in from a different culture, from a different background, from a different gender, they're going to create something that we haven't seen before. The way that we look at demographics is that we go, okay, the majority of our player base is, let's say, a white male. So we're going to make stuff for white males. But if you make something from the perspective of an, of an Asian trans woman and it's really strong, then it will work for people. We're going to get back to that. I know you're side-eyesing the computers right now. People crave new stories. If you want to innovate, even to stay current, it's not about graphics, it's not about hardware. It's about opening up new perspectives for people. So I explain it as it's important in game development to diversify. It's not just part of advocacy or activism. It is going to make your games better. Also, of course, gamers are mostly white guys. You're making games for white guys. Try making games for somebody else. Or maybe they'll show up. To the imbecile that wrote that, if the majority of people that play games are white men why would you not make games for white men i just don't understand that i mean i don't know if that is even true to begin with like i said i'm not white and it's never bothered me when there's been a white male lead if there is a trans lead character to me it's like okay fine but let's see how they implemented them in the story. It's very easy to see when something is forced. I know when you're forcing something. It's the same with movies. Do you think anybody had a problem with Blade being black? Do you think anybody has an issue with Hela being a woman? It's not the fact that they're black or female. It matters on how you implement them into the story. Now, the line where you said, but if you make something from the perspective of, of an Asian trans woman and it's really strong, then it will work for people. Where did you get that information from? What planet? do you come from? That's not true. It might work for Asian trans people, but it's not going to work for people in general. In general, what people do is they build a character and they build them in a way that can resonate with the masses, right? The overwhelming majority. It might not resonate with everyone, but then they build a personality for that character that can connect with multiple walks of life and can be a topic of discussion. The problem with people like Sweet Baby Inc. is that they shoehorn things into development that we can blatantly see were just put there to be representative of a type of people that are likely not even playing your game. Now this is another individual that works for Sweet Baby Inc and he said the cool thing about liking video games is that you can go play video games instead of joining a weird cult and being wrong about everything and obviously this is in response to the hyper criticism that Sweet Baby Inc is facing right now. I'm going to circle this all back in a moment but this kind of mentality does sort of link into something that I was going to talk about in another video but I'll briefly bring it up now and people always say to me why are you so critical of Mortal Kombat? If you don't like it don't play it and i'll never understand those people i'll never really get it if you love a franchise and you don't want to see it go down the drain and you have a platform you should speak about it now you're always going to get imbeciles like grant making out like you're wasting your time that you're in a weird cult where you just complain about everything but obviously that's not how reality works i make this video i put it out online in hopes that people share my opinion and share my video around and then i go about my day but i can still hate something i can hate this current iteration and still want it to do better now the reason that i'm making this sweet baby ink video is because Sweet Baby Inc. needs to be held accountable for their behaviors. They are holier than thou people that think they know what we want and what we want is the complete opposite to what they're putting out. And so this video, much like the other videos on the internet, are to hold these people to account to make sure that they're driven out of the gaming industry, that they're not getting their grubby paws on our games and so that we don't have to suffer with Western games because we're all gamers here. Yes, we go outside and touch grass. Yes, we go and talk to girls. Obviously, you know, don't comment all that nonsense. Those are all reductive talking points. We're trying to get to the root of an issue here and the issue 
issue here is Sweet Baby Inc. These guys are plastered all over everything. They have deep roots in a lot of companies where we purchase games from. And like I said, people, it's like I said with Mortal Kombat, vote with your wallet. If you find out these people are involved, don't purchase the game. Now, there are a lot of awesome creators that are covering this story and I'm likely going to cover it going forward, but this is just a brief overview of what we're looking at. Now, how does this all tie back to Mortal Kombat? Well, as you can see there, Sweet Baby Inc. had their grubby paws on Mortal Kombat, and that might explain why some of the narrative went down the way it did. And that might explain why some characters look the way they do, and that might explain why Mortal Kombat is in the state that it's in. Now, I wouldn't blame Sweet Baby Inc. for the entire mess. You know, we still got to put blame on NRS, especially when you're talking about gameplay. But Sweet Baby Inc. have gotten their grubby paws into so many different things. I mean, just off the top of my head, before I close out this video, and I don't mean this to sound weird. Now, like I said, I'm half black, so I feel like it's fine to talk about these things. But even if you're not half black, don't feel pressured into thinking that you can't speak on these things when they're so blatantly obvious. But just off the top of my head, do you guys remember playing God of War Ragnarok? And you're going through the game, and everyone in the character is white because it's based on Norse mythology, because it's based on a part of the world where you'd only really find white people. And then you randomly get this little black girl. I was thinking to myself, what? <laughs> What's going on here? Now, the overall game was pretty good, right? The gameplay sold me. Kratos was pretty awesome in the game, but it's those sort of things where it's like, was that necessary? Would it have taken away from the game if there was no black character in the game? It's little things like that that you need to look out for that I think you, when you force diversity, it kind of loses its meaning. But anyways, guys, that's all I really wanted to cover today. It's a brief overview. They did get their grubby paws on Mortal Kombat and this situation is going to continue to, to develop and I'll likely be talking about it going forward. It's going to turn into a Gamergate 2.0 situation by the looks of it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If there's anything else you want me to cover regarding this, I'd be more than happy to. And I'm definitely going to be paying attention to the conversation. Take care, have a good day and peace.